Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's math channel. Um, I'm doing paper two, the P2, pure mathematics paper from the October 2019 International A-Level Edexcel papers. The question four, part A says f of x equals x minus 3 in brackets times in brackets 3x squared plus x plus a close bracket minus 35 where a is a constant state the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 3 okay now this is something where a lot of students um, they don't really understand what they're doing but uh, they just go ahead and just know what to do like because what they memorized. And the remainder theorem basically, um, as we're taught, is basically if you substitute inside the function whatever makes the bracket that you're dividing by become zero, then that will give us the remainder when you divide by that particular um, you know, expression. So if I divide it, if I divide by x minus three, okay, x minus three equals zero. So x equals 3. So if that means I substitute 3 into the function. If I substitute 3 into the function, I'm going to get 0 times 3x squared. Well, that's going to be 0 times whatever. You know that you don't have to worry about it because if this is 0, then all of this will be 0 as well. Okay, everything, these, these two products will give you 0. So that's going to become basically a. Um, 0 times a minus 35. That's going to become 0. So you end up with minus 35 so the remainder is minus 35 you didn't actually have to work that out to be honest okay it's something that you could have just seen but i just want to kind of explain a bit because uh, some people they don't understand why things are what they are they just memorize how to do things now what i want to explain to you is this imagine i mean if you divide f of x by x minus 3 just suppose this is like an equation this is f of x okay we don't know what f of x is but we know that it's equivalent to x minus 3 times 3x squared plus x plus a minus 35. Now, supposing we divide f of x by 3. That means I've got to divide all of this by 3. So I could divide it as one whole fraction or I could divide the separate terms by x minus 3. Now, what happens here is these cancel out. So f of x divided by, th by x minus 3 so f of x, when you divide it by x minus 3, you end up with 3x squared plus x plus a minus 35 over x minus 3. So basically, when you divide f of x by x minus 3, you're left with a, you could think of it as a whole number and a fraction. It's like when you divide, say, uh, let's say we divide 14 by, say, 5. That's going to give you 3 as a whole number, remainder 4 over 5. That's the remainder, that's the whole number, and that's the original denominator. So when you divide f of x by x minus 3, you're left with this as a whole number and that as a remainder. And if you actually were to divide x minus 3 with whatever f of x was, you'd be, you'd, you'd be left with the whole number part up here, 3x squared plus x plus a. And if you did the long division you'd end up with a minus 35 underneath. That's the remainder. Okay, so that's where this kind of um, understanding comes from. I just wanted to just go into a bit of, little bit of detail just to explain to you um, what this, this is. And sometimes, supposing f of x was divided by something else, in, f in fact, they told us in the second question that when you divide f of x by 3x minus 2, okay, it's a factor. Okay, so you can, let's just... Look at that now, okay, and just to, to have a bit more understanding. Uh, as I said, I'm sorry if I'm going on a bit here, and some of you have an exam soon, whatever. And I just, but as I said, you know, I'm I'm doing this these videos really to try to uh, help people who didn't maybe understand things so well, and I wanted to just, you know, go into a bit more detail. Anyway, so if you divide f of x, f of x by three x minus two. Then you divide this by 3x minus 2, okay, and you divide this by 3x minus 2. Basically, um, if it's a factor, then the remainder is going to be 0, okay? The remainder is going to be 0, basically, all right? So that's what's going to happen. Uh, the remainder will end up as 0. There will be no remainder when you divide f of x by 3x minus 2. The remainder will be 0. So you'll end up with a 0 here. So 
you know, depending on what these numbers are, you'll end up with a zero there, basically. So that's why when you divide something by, um, some, if you divide something by uh, one of its factors, you get zero as your remainder. So for example, if I divided uh, 15 by 5, I'll get 3 and I'll get remainder 0. So it's 3 and 0 over 5 basically. You don't have to write that of course. So that's where this kind of little understanding comes from. Okay now, so of course if, as, as I mentioned the answer to part A, if x minus 3 um, divided, if f of x is divided by x minus 3, okay, um, you get um, you know, if fx is divided by x minus 3, what's the remainder? Well, it's going to be negative 35 because the x minus 3 cancels with this and you're going to be left with minus 35 as your remainder part. You'll have this as your whole number and minus 35 over x minus 3, that's the remainder. Okay, or you put x equals 3 in here, this becomes 0 and you're left with my f of 3 equals minus 35. So th minus 35 is the remainder. Okay, I hope it didn't go on too long there. Now, it says, given that 3x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, show that a equals minus 17. So if, if, if 3x minus 2 is a factor, if it's a factor, that means when you divide, okay, the function f of x by 3x minus 2, you have a remainder of 0 because a factor leaves no remainder when it divides into something. So 15 over 5 equals 3, remainder 0. 20 over 4 equals 5, remainder 0. 0 and so on. So f of x divided by x minus 3x minus 2 will leave you a, a whole number part and the remainder will be 0. So if we substitute whatever makes 3x minus 2 0 into the function, which is x equals 2 thirds, okay, that means the remainder will be 0. So when, okay, basically when x minus, let me write it properly, when 3x minus 2 or if 3x minus 2, pardon me, if 3x minus 2 is a factor of f of x, then if we put 2 thirds into the function f, we get 0. Okay, so let's do that. Let's put 2 thirds into the function f. So you have 2 thirds minus 3 multiplied by 3 times 2 thirds squared plus 2 thirds plus a minus 35 and we know that must be 0 because they told us that it is a factor. Okay, so now let's carry on. 2 thirds minus 3 which is 2 thirds minus 9 over 3 which is minus 7 over 3 um, and you're going to have 3 times 4 over 9 you square that and you got plus two thirds, you can't do anything with that, plus a, you can't do anything with that. And let's just add 35 to both sides to get rid of that there. And then we can get rid of this fraction, multiply by three and divide by minus seven. They cancel out, so you have to do the same thing here. Multiply by three, divide by minus seven. That cancels, that gives you minus five, that's minus 15. And inside here, you're gonna have uh, the three cancelling with the nine, giving you three, so that's four over three. So you have four over three plus 2 over 3 plus a equals negative 15. This is 6 over 3, which is 2, plus a equals negative 15. And therefore, we subtract 2 from both sides. a equals negative 17. And I think that's exactly what we had to show. Yes, we did. a equals negative 17. So there we have the answer to part b. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there another part c? Yeah, it says, using algebra and showing each step of your working, fully factorize f of x. Okay, so now we know what A is, we can now, um, let me just take this down there so we can see what we're doing. Okay, so we know this is the function, and we know that 3x minus 2 is a factor. And we also know that A equals negative 17. Okay, we also know that A is equal to negative 17. So let's try and now sort this out. So first of all, what we need to do is we need to find what um, the function is with a here. And I'm going to expand it as well so that we can see what it is properly. So you're going to have f of x is equal to, that's 3x cubed. Remember, this is negative 17. So I'll just write that in the place of that here. 3x squared. Uh, sorry, not 3x squared. What am I talking about? 3x times x is 3x cubed. 
So x times 3x squared is 3x cubed. x times x is x squared. x times minus 17 is minus 17x. Then you've got minus 3 times 3x, which is minus 9x squared. And minus 3 times x, which is minus 3x. And minus 3 times minus 17, which is plus. That's 3, 30 plus 21 plus 51. And then you've got minus 35. So let's simplify that. You've got f of x equals 3x cubed. There's no other x cubed term. x squared minus 9x squared, which is negative 8x squared. Minus 17x and minus 3x, which is minus 20x. And 51 minus 35, 45 plus, that's 10 plus 6, 16. That's plus 16. Okay, so there we have the actual function f of x, um, which we calculate, we worked it out because we know what a is now. So we told, we are told that 3x minus 2 is a factor of f of x. So again, there's a number of ways we could deal with this. There's two main ways. One of them is by long division. I'm going to do one of them on this side and one of them on that side so we can see what's happening. So I'm just going to show you how to do use both methods to answer this question. Okay, I'm going to use long division and I'm going to use another one called comparing coefficients. Um, both of them are pretty okay. But let's, let's start with long division. Most people use long division. So what they do is they say, okay, 3x minus 2 divided into, and you have to make sure that all the terms are here. Like you've got the x term, the constant term, nothing missing. Here you've got 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus 20x plus 16. All right, if one of the terms, for example, if there was no x term here, I'd put plus 0x here just to keep everything in the right place, the right power position. Now, what you do is you say 3x into 3x squared goes x squared times. Sorry, 3x into 3x cubed goes x squared times. x squared times 3x is 3x cubed. And x squared times minus 2 is minus 2x squared. It's just like long, div long division you did in primary school. Well, not exactly, but kind of like it. Then you subtract these. It gives you 0. You subtract those. You're going to have minus 8x squared. And you're going to have minus and minus, which is plus 2x squared, which is negative 6x squared. And you bring the next term down, which is minus 20x. Then you say, okay, negative 6 divided by 3. How many times does 3x go into negative 6x squared? Well, negative 2x times. Then negative 2x times 3x is negative 6x squared. And negative 2x times negative 2 is plus 4x. And then we subtract these, and this gives you 0. And this gives you minus 24 uh, minus 20x and this is one second yeah minus 20x and minus I'll be minus 24x yeah one second what did we do there yeah minus 24x all right so you have a plus 16 here and then you say tw minus 24 into th into 3 is minus 8 8 minus 24x goes uh, minus 3x goes into minus 24x minus 8 times and minus 8 times 3x is minus 24x and minus 8 times minus 2 is plus 16 that worked out just right just got I was getting a bit worried before but it's fine that's zero so therefore we have um, almost finished we have now found another factor of 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus 20x plus 16 if you divide this by 3x minus 2 you end up with this so these two multiplied give you that they are factors of that just like if I divide 20 by 4 I get 5 4 and 5 are factors of 20 so I divide this by 3x minus 2 then what I get as my answer times 3x minus 2 will give me that original number so now we can finish it off by factorizing it fully because it says fully factorize and I think that, that term that we found there can be factorized further. So we got here um, 3x minus 2 times. And you've got x squared minus 2x minus 8. And that gives you 3x minus 2. This, I think, goes into two brackets quite simply. x in both of them. One of them will be positive. One of them will be negative. They multiply to give you minus 8. And they add to give you minus 2. Well, it must be a minus 4 and a plus 2. So we have now fully factorized the original expression using algebraic long division. Okay, now, the other way of doing it is to do as follows. We have our function, which is 3x cubed minus 8x squared minus 20x plus 16 equals, 
And we know one of the factors is 3x minus 2. So I'll write 3x minus 2 times. And I know that this is linear. And what it multiplies by to give me this cubic must be a quadratic. So I'll put ax squared plus bx plus c. I hope you can see it all right there. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, all right, let me compare the coefficients on both sides because these two must be actually identical. If this expands to give me that, then they must be identical. So let's look at the x cubed term on the left hand side and let's look at the right hand side of this identity okay on the left hand side the coefficient of x cubed is 3 and it must be the same value as the coefficient of x cubed on this side now the coefficient of this of x cubed on this side is going to be 3a 3a x cubed so it's going to be 3a okay because 3x times ax squared is going to give me my x cubed term so that means a must be 1, which corresponds to what we got here. The quadratic is 1x squared. And then we can, the, the other thing that's easy to compare is the constant terms. The constant, the highest and the lowest order is the easiest to compare because they appear the least number of times. Like x cubed only came once. And also here, the constant only comes once. When you expand this bracket, it comes once. When you do minus 2 times c, so that's minus 2c. So straight away we can say that means c is equal to 16 over minus 2 which is negative 8 and we can see that that's what we got for the constant term in our quadratic negative 8. So we've so far we've got x squared here and negative 8 here which corresponds exactly to what we did when we got long division. Then you can choose to, to compare either the x squared or the x term. It's up to you. I'm going to compare the x squared term. So I know that on the left hand side I got minus 8 x squared. On the right hand side I've got, well, how do I get x squared? When I do 3x times bx, that's 3bx squared. So 3b is the coefficient. And then when I do minus 2 times ax squared, which is minus 2a, there's no other x squared terms going to come. You're either multiplying x by a constant or x by x squared. Only ones is when x is multiplied by x or minus 2 is multiplied by the x squared. So you've got 3b minus 2a equals minus 8. Well, I already know a is 1. So I can say minus 8 is equal to 3b minus 2. If I add 2 to both sides, I've got negative 6 equals 3b. So therefore, b is equal to minus 6 over 3, which is minus 2, which is exactly what we found, that b to be here. And then the rest of it is exactly the same as what we did there. We can say, okay, we now know the factors are 3x minus 2 times, and then you can say ax squared, which is 1x squared, um, minus 2x, and minus 8 and then we can continue to factorize exactly as we did there and you got x plus 2 times x minus 4 and there we have the answer to part C um, yeah well I did it on the other page already okay so we've done a B and C maybe I should have used the other page to do it but I hope you I hope that was clear for everybody I took longer than I should have in this question, of course. I'm not doing this question as a timed exercise. Um, I'm doing this, these questions to help people understand the concepts behind these questions, not to try and finish the, the paper as quick as possible. Okay, there's no, there will be no point in me doing that. So I want you to understand what's going on. So I tried to give a bit of background to this, and I just showed you two different methods of doing um, factorizing a cubic Okay, when you know one of the factors, uh, you know one of the one of the factors are you can then find the other factor either by long division or by comparing the coefficients. They're both perfectly fine and good, um, and you know getting used to this is actually something useful, which com will come in useful later on when we do something called partial fractions, which comes in P four if you go on to A level maps. So anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, other videos in this paper will be found in the playlist as I add them up here and questions about the remainder and factor theorem um, algebraic manipulation whatever algebraic fractions will be found here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the icon that should appear somewhere around this area thank you for watching and I'll see you in another video